everybody, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com, an awesome online community for learning about Lightroom. Uh, on Wednesday here on LightroomKillerKips.com, I did a post that showed how to create a layout like this. Now, I did it with wedding photos, but it doesn't matter what kind of photos you use. But I had a lot of questions, and I thought I'd give you uh, some answers and some tips. So let's dive right in. First uh, thing people asked was, okay, once you've created this custom layout here, and that's using the custom package thing here. Once you have it all laid out, how do you save it? You actually go over here to the template browser. You're going to click the plus sign over here, and then you can give your template a name. And I usually name mine by how many photos are in it. So there's 11 photos in this one, so I would call it like SK, so I know that I created it. 11 photo up or something like that, 11 photo template grid or something like that. So I'll, I would name that and click OK. And then I've already done that. It shows up here under your user templates. These are ones that you've created or downloaded or whatever. And there it is, SK11 photo grid. So that's one of the things that people are asking about. I want to give you a, a just a real quick tip while we're talking about this. Once you do save it, when you move your cursor over the um, the template that you created, look up here in the preview panel. It actually does show you a preview of all the different layouts and things. So that's kind of handy and kind of important and stuff like that. All right, uh, next is when you save this layout, let's say that you save this, and let's say that you did this for a client, and they come back to you at some point and said, hey, I want to get another, you know, another 10 copies of that print. Well, here's the problem. If you have not saved this layout with these images in this order, you've got the blank template, but you're starting over from scratch and you may not know where all these photos are. You may not have them in all in the same collection. You don't want to start from scratch, basically. That's why when you've got a layout that you like, go up here in the right corner and choose Create Saved Print. That creates a new collection with these photos in this layout, in that exact order at this size. So if you ever need to go back, you're one click away. If not, you'll just click on the collection and you'll have to start rebuilding it from scratch. So to keep from doing that, you want to click on that. Now, here's another tip. Let's say that you edit this. Let's say that you make a copy here. Let's make a copy of this, of this uh, square. And we're going to make it into a rectangle here. All right, and we'll drop maybe a different image in there. Here, let me go down to the, let's just drop a different image in here. How about this field here? All right, all right. So let's say that we do that. And while we're here, let's drag another one, another copy. I'm holding the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and we'll stick another image down there or something. I think we've already used that. Oh, well, what do we got? And you can reposition and here's another tip. You can reposition the images inside the cell by holding the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. So now I've got a new layout, right? So a new layout. What you can do is either create a whole brand new one, save a whole new one, but if you just want to change your existing one, go over here to your existing saved template, right click right on it and choose update with current settings and that will become your new preset. So if you do make some changes and you want to keep them, you're all set. Now I'm going to undo those changes. I'm going to hit Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows till it goes away because I don't really want to do that. Here's another little tip. Let's say that you add a new, a new like I'm going to add a new three by three cell. Now it's going to be so big it'll probably create. Yeah, it did its own separate page. Now I'm going to drag an image in there. Let's drag this image into that square, and it it fits inside the square. But there is an option to automatically have the container you dragged it in fit the actual photo size. If you right click, you would choose match photo aspect ratio. Now that's a wide photo. And in this case, it's a stuck inside a square. Choose match photo aspect ratio, and it spreads out just like that. All right, one more. So I mentioned in the first video from Wednesday, February 7th, in case you want to go back and check it, Wednesday, February 7th, 2017, um, that there is an invisible grid that this stuff snaps to. You can see it snapping there. If you actually want to see the grid, go down here to, whoops, I went right past it, to Rulers, Grid, and Guides. Turn on Show Guides, 
and then turn on page grid and you can see the little grid there that everything is going to attach to. Okay, that is it. Hey, this weekend, if you are looking for a really, really cool class to watch, go check out Christy Shirk's Portrait Retouching in Lightroom. It's over on Kelby One. You can watch it right now. Of course, if you're a member, if you're not a member, you can watch it right now too. Just take the 10-day free trial. You can watch it immediately and start learning. All right, guys, hope you have a great weekend. Catch you back here on Monday.